Morning Juice on Z89. Connor Green with you up until 1130 on the Central New York Sports Leader. Number to call, 315-443-4487. That is 315-443-4487. Again, Connor Green with you up until 1130. A bit of an abbreviated edition of the Morning Juice on Z89 as we Wrap up our Friday night football coverage for the season later this morning. We have Dulgeville versus Onondaga at noon, followed by Casanova versus Homer. And all of our coverage for those games begins at 11.45. So the morning juice today will go up on till 11.30. A lot of good stuff on today's program, talking Syracuse football, NCAA football as a whole. SU basketball, as well as a little bit of NFL talk mixed in. And Syracuse yesterday goes down to Death Valley in Clemson and falls to the Tigers 54 to nothing. An absolute shellacking. And look, I mean, I think everybody going into yesterday's game felt like Syracuse was going to get beat. Obviously, 27 and a half point underdogs on the road in a hostile environment to the number two team in the nation. So it wasn't like anybody was expecting Syracuse to go down there and win. But a lot of people were hoping that Syracuse would go down there and at least compete better than they did. And obviously they took a huge loss in the first quarter when Eric Dungy goes down with an injury. And we're still waiting on an update as to how long he'll be out for. Dino Babers talked about it after the game. He said... You know, it was a shoulder injury, and I think Dino was downplaying it. Either he didn't know or didn't want to admit to the fact that it was a concussion, but I think all signs pointed to Eric Dungy being concussed. He was hit underneath the chin, he went down, and it appeared to be a head injury as opposed to a shoulder injury, like Dino had suggested post game. Now, obviously, Dungy suffered a concussion last season, so this would be number two. Um, And he's somebody that has taken a lot of big hits in his SU career uh, as a runner. So, you know, the big story coming out of this game is not really what happened during the game. Once Dungy went down, things kind of spiraled out of control. And that can happen not only when you have a, a team who loses their quarterback against an evenly matched team, but when you have your quarterback go down on the road against the number two team in the country, one of the best teams in all of NCAA football, you have to expect that things might spiral out of control to the point where it becomes an absolute smashing. And yesterday was that. Again, 54 to nothing. So the real story is not how they played in yesterday's game because, look, it was poor, and really there are no positives to take away from that game. To look at that game and say, well, this they did this well at least, or you know, this was okay. There are really no instances of that in yesterday's game. I think the only positive you could possibly look at is that Amba Edetawo became the receiving yards leader in a single season, as well as the receptions leader for a single season in SU history. So at least they have that uh, to talk about a little bit after this one. But in terms of how the game actually went, there aren't too many positives. So I think what you have to talk about is whether Eric Dungy will be available in the coming weeks. Again, he has to go through the concussion protocol, and after the game, he was on the sidelines, but just looking at the way he was acting, he seemed pretty down and obviously suffered a big injury, so he was out. But it didn't just, you don't have the feel that he's going to be back next week. Obviously, that's just a speculative um, discussion, but it doesn't seem like he was looking like he would be able to come back in six days, seven days, just the way he looked on the sideline. And Dino Babers, again, kind of downplayed it in the postgame press conference saying that, you know, it was more of a shoulder injury. It wasn't a head injury. But I think everyone can come to the conclusion based on the fact that he came off the field and he was hit underneath the chin and uh, how that was the case, that it was most likely a concussion that Dungy suffered. And again, if Dungy's out for any extended period, make it one week, two weeks, you can pretty much write off Syracuse's bull hopes. But if Dungy's able to return and possibly play in next week's game. And if not, maybe against FSU. They could possibly steal a win next week against NC State. Then, you know, you're going to lose to FSU, so write that one off. And then maybe Dungy's back in time for the Pittsburgh game, and Syracuse can compete in that one with Dungy at the helm. But if he's out for two weeks, three weeks, I mean, possibly an extended period of time, which you don't think will be the case, but you never know, then you can almost definitely write off Syracuse's bull hopes. But coming out of this game against Clemson, 
the number one thing is basically just to say, forget the game. It's like a couple of years ago when New England got absolutely smashed on Monday night by the Chiefs, and Bill Belichick, after the game, had nothing to say other than, you know, we're on to Cincinnati. In this one, the only takeaway is Dino Baber saying, we just have to move on, and Baber's talked about that post game. That's what good football teams do. We've got to be able to flush it. It's some of the things we talked about after the game. You just don't ever want a, a team to beat you twice. And it happens with young people, 18 to 22 years of age. But uh, we're, we're on top of it. We're, we addressed it right after the game. We've got an opportunity for a, a fantastic season, and we need to bury this one right here, and we've got to get on to our next opponent. And that's really all it comes down to, is they just need to move on from this one and basically forget that it even happens. You, you played a team with stars all over the field with so much five-star talent you know obviously a top five team in NCAA football one of the best coach teams in NCAA football with some of the most talent in the country so you know Syracuse going into it even with Dungy healthy you think okay maybe if they can just possibly stick stay in the game to a certain extent with Dungy maybe keep it to 14 points you feel like this one would have been an accomplishment but once Dungy goes down, everything goes out the window, and obviously Syracuse had this one spiral out of control, but that's to be expected when you lose your quarterback against one of the best teams in the country. So for Syracuse, it's just, hey, look, we lost our quarterback. We had a couple of injuries in this game. Things got away from us. You know, 54 nothing. who cares? If it's 54 nothing and we lose, it's the same as if we lose 21-7. It's the same if we, if we lose 28-14. So they just have to look at it that way and say, look, we're not expected to win. We weren't expected to win going down there. We were huge underdogs. We suffered an injury at the quarterback position, which would be tough to recover from if we played a team that was on our level. You know, if if we were playing an evenly matched team, if we played Boston College and lost Dungy, you could expect that things might spiral a little bit out of control. So to lose Dungy against Clemson... You, you, this is most likely what's going to going to happen. So you know, Dino Babers and the team basically just has to say, we need to move on, and completely scrap this one. And you know, you just see the difference at the talent positions between Clemson and Syracuse. There were a couple of plays yesterday where, like, Syracuse was in the right position defensively, and Clemson's receivers just made big time plays. And you know, that's what happens. Coaching is obviously fundamentally so crucial to football but you know when you're playing a team that has so much more talent than you all across the field especially at the skill positions and up in the offensive line there's just not much you can do as a head coach you put your guys in the right positions you can put them into positions to succeed but in the end if you just don't have the athletes to make the plays there's just not much you can do and you know there was a couple plays yesterday where you know Syracuse was in the right position and Deshaun Watson would take a shot down the field and one of the receivers would just jump over Syracuse secondary players, and, and that'd be it, in double coverage. You know, it wasn't like they were out of position, or the, the coaching was poor, or it looked like guys were confused on the field. It was just an, a, a, a scenario where Clemson's players were just a lot more talented than Syracuse's players. So, you know, it, obviously, you'd want to see them keep it to possibly a 21-point game, a 28-point game, maybe a 30-point game to get B54 to nothing can be a little bit demoralizing. But, you know, I think Dino Babers has the pulse of this team, and he'll be able to say, hey, look, guys, we were undermatched as it was. We lost our quarterback. They're one of the best teams in the country. It is what it is, and we just have to put it behind us. And so that's most likely what he echoed in the locker room. And if they go on that message, I think they should be okay as long as Dungy is healthy moving forward. Morning Juice here on Z89. Connor Green with you up on till 1130 on the Central New York Sports Leader. We'll take a quick break and come right back after this on the Central New York Sports Leader Z89.